Hi, everybody. It is uh, coming up on 5 o'clock on a Monday, and basically it's go time. Been talking about this for, uh, what, going way back to the mid part of last week at least. And the front, circled in the black circle here, is just upstream in the northwest flow pattern and is on track to come in tonight between 10 and 11 o'clock this evening. So in the meantime, clouds will thicken up. We'll start getting into more of a scattered shower pattern this evening. Haven't seen much rain around, as you know so far today and really when the front comes in it's not initially a big rainmaker scattered showers will actually pick up behind the front overnight and as colder air starts to move in that cold air will actually fuel convection and start fueling a pretty active uh, shower pattern i think during the day tomorrow snow levels will drop i still think we'll have snow levels down somewhere between just above a thousand feet and below 1500 feet uh, as we get going into early tomorrow morning okay all right I almost uh, clicked the wrong thing. Here we go. Watch warning map from the National Weather Service. Lots of things going on. So the, the white base color up and down the valley, that's nothing. <laughs> okay. All this talk about what's going on. We may see some valley winter weather advisories issued, let's say, on Wednesday for snow showers in the air and some sticking snow pockets. But right now we have nothing. Okay. And again, it's just going to be rain for the valley tomorrow. Kind of a I don't know, March, October, explosive convective rain day. But the colors up and down the coast range and then uh, here in the Cascades, winter storm warnings that start tonight at 10 p.m. and extend all the way into Wednesday morning. It still looks like maybe two feet of snow for the Cascades, maybe 6 to 12 in the, um, in the coast range. The purple colors uh, along the coast just for hazardous seas. I think I, I read that the marine forecast for tomorrow's combined seas coming in to 24 feet. So... Uh, these big storm swells can produce sneaker waves and bring debris on shore and, and, and that type of thing. Uh, the other colors over here, this is uh, parts of uh, Wasco down into uh, Jefferson, Deschutes counties. These are varying degrees of wind advisories and wind warnings that start this evening and go through early tomorrow morning. And basically on this east flank of the Cascades, we'll see west winds tonight pick up and gust to at least 40 to 50. There could be some pockets get some heavier winds, maybe 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. That's the Columbia Basin east scores out to the uh, Pendleton area and then also that part of uh, central Oregon that I talked about. Anyway, the, the basic coldness of the air mass coming in is unchanged from what we've been talking about. So it still looks like if you averaged out the mean temperature with the low and the high is every day, Tuesday through Sunday, you'd come out with an average of some 12 to 16 degrees colder than normal. There could be, you know, days Thursday, for example, where the average is closer to 20 degrees below normal. And if we, in fact, get down to the low 20s Thursday or Friday mornings, that will be near record low temperatures for this time of the year. So again, this map, uh, I don't know if you can see the numbers at home, probably not. It just shows you departures. The purple area up here, that's temperatures that are expected to be some 30 degrees below normal. Up here in parts of uh, eastern Washington, that's the Spokane area and across the Canadian border. Coming into the gorge, and this is the wind of the air that the east wind will start feeding off of as it develops Wednesday into Thursday and continues into Friday. So that east wind pulling these temperature departures as cold as 20 degrees below normal. And then the green shades on the map are more like 12, 13, 14 degrees below normal. So anyway, the, the cold air is definitely, definitely still a go. <clears throat> I showed you this map the other day. And again, just to highlight that it's the east winds picking up Wednesday into Thursday morning that will set up the coldest air temperatures. Of course, the coldest wind chills. It also set up the lowering snow levels Wednesday into uh, Thursday morning. Which brings me to this map. So tomorrow, for sticking snow Tuesday, I don't think the snow level quite gets down to 1,000 feet, but I think it will be less than 1,500 feet. So you're somewhere right in there. Don't be surprised especially Cascade Foothill communities, if you're like, whoa, we're at 1,000 feet and we're, we're seeing snow, okay? That could happen. Um, Tuesday up and down the valley would just be rain showers, but the cold air loft will fuel convection. So I think we'll get some scattered downpours. I think we'll absolutely see some hail showers tomorrow, but temperatures will be above freezing, generally 40 or better during the day at lowest elevations, and it will just be rain. Now, that continues Tuesday overnight. The winds don't switch to the east until early Wednesday morning, and that's what allows dry air to come in and temperatures get colder, snow levels to really fall. So Wednesday for right now, I'm going to leave it generally at about 500 feet for sticking snow showers. Could be a little bit higher, could be a little bit lower. 
I think Wednesday, if you look at the radar at any given moment, it will, in fact, be mostly snow or kind of an icy mix, what we would call drop of those little ice pellets in the air. There could be some rain mixing in, but I bet you most of the showery activity in the air, Wednesday will be snow or that kind of icy pellets called, called grapple. Now, once the east winds start to blow, they will be pulling colder air out of the gourds. So I will be watching temperatures, especially in the afternoon in East Multnomah County and East Clark County, areas out near the gorge. You folks might be down or might see your temperatures drop during the day and start picking up some sticking snow while the rest of us are holding above freezing. I certainly think Wednesday evening into Thursday that whatever falls will be snow and temperatures will be freezing and anything that falls will start to stick. Again, we're not looking at a, a big widespread batch of snow and I'm not even positive we're looking at a couple of decent snow bands. But if we get a couple of snow bands moving through, we could certainly see anywhere from a dusting to two inches of snow at the lowest elevations Wednesday evening into Thursday morning. As we go on into the day Thursday, I think eventually the east winds will start to win the day. We'll just have flurries as the air gets drier and drier and really kind of colder and colder. So Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, kind of the, the overall bullseye, even for the Metro Hills, that's going to be the best chance of, hey, we're starting to get you know, uh, something sticking, a dusting, an inch or two, something like that. We're sticking with the 12 to 24 inches up in the mountains, and we're sticking with 6 to 12 inches in the coast range. Again, the coast range it will only be the high passes picking up snow around 1,000 feet or above on Tuesday, but then all the coast range will become dicey and potentially snow-covered. With it's, Again, it's going to be scattered snow showers. That doesn't mean that everybody gets it, but much of the coast range, I think, would have a chance of being snow-covered um, more than not, eventually, as we, we get into the day of uh, Wednesday. <clears throat> all right, what have I got coming up here? So just some headlines. We talked about the all rain below 1,000 feet on Tuesday, tomorrow, of course. We talked about Wednesday being mostly snow or an icy mix. And as east winds come in, maybe it's the p.m. hours that the east side does start to slip down to freezing and see some sticking snow. We'll watch that. All areas seeing uh, sticking snow, with, but it's going to be scattered activity, a dusting to two inches. Wednesday evening through Thursday morning. I mean, there are some weather models. I worked at KGW this morning. Some of the Futurecast models there were showing a pretty good snow band Wednesday evening that was fairly widespread in nature that would cover a lot of us, at least with a dusting, I would think. So, again, we're watching that. Not a snowstorm, but maybe a dusting an inch or two. Gorge snow showers become possible Tuesday night through Thursday a.m., and you would think, again, it may not be completely widespread, but you would think there would be some decent areas in the gorge pick up at least some snow on the ground, including Hood River. All right, that just brings me to the seven-day forecast. I didn't talk a lot about wind. Uh, again, we have winds at the coast picking up uh, this evening into the overnight hours. Northwesterly is gusting to 40. I think overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning, there will be noticeable winds in the valley. Maybe northwesterly is gusting to 35. We get into the daytime hours of Tuesday with those showers scattered, some of them heavy with hail, some northwest winds gusting to maybe 25 in the afternoon. Wednesday morning is when the east winds start to kick. That's why I have a temperature above freezing Wednesday morning. Because if we could stay westerly throughout Tuesday night, that would allow, allow the lower spots like Portland to stay above freezing into Wednesday morning. And then I've got 34 to 40, but Wednesday's going to be interesting. If east winds start to kick, maybe we warm up to 30, maybe we warm up to 40 at noon. And then all of a sudden east winds start to fire and get stronger and the temperature actually drops during the afternoon. And maybe, you know, in scattered areas, we, we get folks saying, hey, we have snow on the ground. So that's Wednesday, but it will be snow showers. We talked about the best chance overall of low-level sticking, dustings to an inch or two being Wednesday night, Thursday. This is all east winds blowing through Friday. Thursday gets into a drying pattern in the afternoon. But look at that, 25 to 32. And then Friday, all dry. And it depends on the wind speed. Remember, we need the winds to get calm for the temperatures to drop to their, you know, furthest potential. But I'll go 20 to 38 on Friday, a little bit of warming during the day. All models now agree that we'll stay dry Friday night. We'll stay dry during the day Saturday. Now, there is some cloudiness coming in Saturday. So it's not like Saturday is a slam dunk to be dry. Right now, it looks like there could be maybe some light precipitation developed Saturday afternoon. But most of the data shows that we stay dry until Saturday overnight and going into Sunday. And if that's the case, and so we hit 40 on Saturday, and then clouds thicken during the evening, and winds are going to be westerly, then I like our chances of staying above freezing, seeing morning rain to showers on Sunday, and seeing occasional shots of rain on Monday. And in other words, no ice on the back end. But that's still something that needs to be watched carefully, okay? 
So that's my update. Um, again, you can check for my my updated forecast on my weather site, which is portlandweather.com. And I really urge you to book that. I also have an app, but my, my weather site comes up on your phone and it should adjust to your screen size. And if you go to my seven day and just click on the worded text, I'll update any snow levels and winds and, and that type of thing. Again, that's at portlandweather.com. All right, that's it for now. Tomorrow we'll be checking out observations and, and just kind of starting to follow along to see exactly what we have Tuesday into Wednesday. Thanks for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'll talk to you soon.